Are you telling this jury that this knife is the murder weapon? Is that what you're telling this jury? No, sir, I'm not telling the jury that. Okay, now that we get to understand that. What day were these individuals charged? What day did you all charge Damien Echols with this crime? Was it June the 3rd? Yes, sir. And what day was it that you were out there searching this lake? This was on 11-17 of 93. November 17 of 1993? Yes, sir. That's all. As I get in a race, I don't hear. The damn system stinks. They're playing with our lives, and there's nothing right about it. It's kind of like the Nazis, you know, they can just take somebody's word and come in your house and take you away. And basically, that's what they did because of what Jesse told them, even though it had all those inconsistencies in it. If we'd had money, you think these three boys would have been picked up? They found people that they knew that didn't have money. Some boys have been in a little bit of trouble. They thought we didn't care, but they were wrong. They're bad wrong. I don't believe that, ch that children could be that cold-blooded as what happened to those boys. Um, State's Exhibit 67A shows the, um, the hog-tying fashion. Um, the, the hands were hog-tied um, to the feet behind the back, and this is a photograph um, showing that, the shoelaces. And that injury, um, you see, it's, it's typical of a, of a belt injury. You know, the belt has a little buckle, and that's what the, the buckle, that's that little um, one that goes back and forth to left and right. That's the, the base of the, uh, the latch. <clears throat> here, this red area here, this is the, uh, the shaft of the penis, and here is where the scrotal sac and testes should be, and they're missing. So what we have is that the, the skin overlying the penis, and the head of the penis, has been carved off. It's gone. It's not there. In layman's language, that I, I understand, with respect, his penis has not been cut off, has it? No, the, the skin has, has been taken off the penis. Okay. And basically, it would take some skill and precision to do that, wouldn't it? I would think so. Okay. If this was to be done, this dissection, where the skin is cut off, that would take a very sharp instrument, would it not? Um, I, I think it would. Okay. Such as a razor. Or a sharp knife. A very sharp mm -hmm. knife. Doctor, if you were to do this with the skill and the precision and the knowledge that you take, how long would it take you to do that? It would take me some time. It would take you longer than five to ten minutes? I would think so. And that's at, in your lab? I would think so. With a scalpel? Is that correct? That's correct. Now, Doctor, if we added to the equation that you were in the dark. Could you, could you do this in the dark? You, doctor, could you do it in the dark? It'd be difficult. Could you do this in the water? You, doctor, could you do this in the water? I think it'd be very difficult to do. If you were doing it in the dark, in the water, with mosquitoes all around you, would that make it even much more difficult? I would think so. It would take you, it would be a very tedious task for you, a skilled pathologist. It would. Now, isn't it true, doctor, that people have five, about five pints of blood? A little more than that, yes. Okay. Uh, now, if I poured out five pints of blood out here on the floor, it'd make a big mess, wouldn't it? Yes. And it would be almost impossible to clean it. <clears throat> Well, you could do it, but not very easy. Very, easily. very difficult, wouldn't it? It's not easy to clean blood. Okay. Does blood soak into the ground? Um, yes, it does. Okay. Doctor, with this homicide we're talking about here today, would you agree with me that this could have happened in one of three ways? These injuries could have happened in the water, these injuries could have happened on the bank there by the side of the ditch, or it could have happened somewhere else. Would you agree with me that those are the three possibilities of how this could have happened? Yes. Okay. Now, with your knowledge of the amount of blood that was lost from not only Chris Byers, but these other boys who have some pretty... They're going to bleed as well, won't they? Oh, yes. Okay. 
do you have an opinion as to whether or not you could clean up that amount of blood at a scene in the dark? Do you have an opinion as to that? I think it would be quite difficult to do, to have um, injuries of this nature without having any blood. I mean, that's... I, I would question that about the blood. Okay. Unless it happened in the water or it happened some other place. Okay. And you again, doctor, stated that you couldn't, you couldn't do this in the water. Personally, I, I don't think I could. Okay. I don't get off on hurting people or inflicting pain on the rest of the human race or just causing destruction for the purpose of destruction. I've probably been in one or two fights my entire life. Mm. And especially a child. Because they didn't do anything to deserve what they got. Mm. And I believe whatever you do to someone else, whether it's good or bad, is eventually going to come back around to you. Mm. Even the person who did this, if they're not caught and punished, then something will happen in their life where they will be punished. People kept telling me not to go out with him. He was like some kind of devil worshiper and stuff, and I met him in Walmart, <laughs> and he followed me around like a puppy dog. <laughs> and we started talking, you know, he was real sweet. Not like everybody else was making him out to be. That night we started going out, and it was like a month. And he called me up on the telephone at my dad's girlfriend's house. And he goes, will you marry me? I'm like, what? <laughs> and he goes, will you marry me? I said, can you repeat that one more time? And he goes, will you marry me? I said, yeah. And when I got pregnant, I had this big picture painted in my mind that, you know, Damien's gonna be there and I get to yell at him when I have the baby. <laughs> and instead, I was yelling at her. <laughs> I miss him so much. Touch the baby. Oh, it makes me so pissed off. I just felt different when he was born. It was. It made me feel like. I guess just real good inside. Just. To think that I gave life to another human being. Something completely separate from me, but still part of me. I just hope that I'll be there when he grows up to watch him. You're familiar with a fellow named Alistair Crowley? You I know who he him? is. I know okay. who he is. Uh, and he's a guy who kind of professes, he's, he's a uh, a noted author in the field of satanic worship, right? I've never, I, I know he is, but I've never saw any of his books personally. Okay. Not really much of a follower of his? I would have read them if I would have saw them, but I just okay. never. Okay. But Aleister Crowley is a guy that, based on his writings, believes in human sacrifice, doesn't he? He also believed he was God, though, so. Okay. And... He also had writings that indicated that children were the best type of human sacrifice, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But Alistair Crowley doesn't have any particular significance to you? I know who he is. I've read a little bit about him, but I've never read anything by him. Okay. Let me show you a copy of some documents. Do you recognize that? Yes. Okay. What is that? Um, it was this paper I had on uh, different alphabets 
for like translations where you could write things that nobody could read, and this was one of the forms. Oh, okay. Well, where did you have that at? Where? Did, when did you do that? Write those things out. Sometime before I was arrested, I guess. Okay. Are you sure that you hadn't done those since you were arrested while you've been staying in jail? I don't know. I might have. Well, what? Whose names are written on that document? Mine, Jason's, my son's, uh, one that says Alistair Crowley. And wait, wait, who? Alistair Crowley. Now, this is a document that you've written while you've been waiting in jail for trial, right? If you say so. Well, you wrote it, correct? At your writing? Mm-hmm. Okay. You recall when you wrote it? Not really. Well, what I'm going to ask you is that this Damien Seth Azariah Eccles, your son, he wasn't born until after you were placed in jail, correct? Yes. Okay. So if you've got his name listed on this document, then this document had to be generated after he was born, right? Yes. Okay, so this is something you've written since you've been sitting in here in jail waiting for trial. Yes. And what you were doing was writing out various names in different type alphabets, correct? From the way it looks here, I was practicing trying to memorize them. Okay. And one of the names that you picked out to write about was this fellow named Alistair Crowley, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that just uh, just a total coincidence you just pulled his name out of the air? No, it's just the same book that I had with this, the different alphabets in it. It also had stuff about him in it. Well, did you have the book out there at the time you were doing this? Mm, this was just from what I remembered myself where I was practicing, trying to memorize Get it all in my head. Perfect. So, so you were going over it, and working on it in your head, and at that point in time, you write all this down from memory. Mm -hmm. The people that are listed on here, you've got your name on here, right? Mm -hmm. And then Jason Baldwin, which is your best friend, right? And then you've got Damien Seth Azariah Eccles. That's your son. Yes, it is. Okay. And then the only other name on this document. Besides yourself, your best friend, and your son is Alistair Crowley, correct? Yes, sir. I believe this witness is requested not to be photographed. That's correct, Your Honor. <clears throat> Would you state your name uh, for the jury? Christy Van Bickle. Okay. And do like you just did and speak up best you can, okay, Christy? Okay. Are you nervous? Yes. All right. Okay. Did you hear somebody say something about the murder of the three little boys? Yes, sir. I heard um, Damien Nichols say that he killed the three boys. Where were you? Was he saying that to you, or what were you doing? I was walking by with my friend. <coughs> Christy, I'm Scott Davidson, and I've got a couple of questions to ask you, too, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, do you remember what day this was that, that you heard this? No, sir. That's the first time you'd ever seen him in your life? Yes, sir. What did he say before you say that he said he killed those three boys? What did he say before that? I don't know. What did he say after that? I don't know. And how, how close were you to him? I wasn't close. Did he scream it? I don't know. Did he yell it? I don't know. Are you next witness? Call Jody Medford. All right, again, this witness is requested not to be photographed. Jody, I want to direct your attention to uh, May of 1993, after the murders of the three little boys. Uh, did you have an occasion to be at the softball field and, and hear a comment in regard to the murder? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> tell the jury uh, first, well, tell the jury first what you heard. He said, I killed the three little boys, and before I turn myself in, then I'm going to kill two more, and I already have one of them picked out. You didn't recognize anybody else that was with him? Um, I saw Jason Baldwin there. Had you heard people talking about Damien before this? Yes, sir. Do you think... <clears throat> Do you think he was kind of weird or something? Yes, sir, because he was dressed all in black and his hair was jet black and long and shaved on the side. 
Margaret, two teenage girls took the stand this morning and they said they heard Damian Eccles confess to the murders of three eight-year-old boys last May. One of the girls said she overheard Damian Eccles say, I killed the three boys and I'm going to kill two more. I already have one picked out. Later in the afternoon when the defense began presenting its witnesses, Damian Eccles himself took the stand. He said he thought the girls were lying and that they were making up those statements. He also said he did not practice Satanism and denied any involvement in the murders of Chris Byers, Michael Moore and Stevie Branch. Were you working at Bojangles restaurant on the evening of May 5th of 1993? Yes, sir. Could you tell us what happened? <clears throat> well, it was about 9.30 at night. Uh, found a black gentleman sitting in the women's restroom on the commode and there was blood dripping off of his forearm but he had mud on his feet uh, and he seemed to be disarrayed when I talked to him. I called the police then. What happened then? It was a female officer for the West Memphis Police Department oh. and uh, she pulled on a light and I saw her coming so I went up to the front door. Well she kept coming around she went to the drive through window. So you did not go in the restroom? No sir I did not. Did you ever find this bleeding black man? No sir I did not. Do you have a report that you made regarding this incident? No, sir, I do not. And you're out looking for some boys, and you're out in that area, and you hear about someone bleeding. Did that, did anything go off in your mind thinking that something may be going on? Okay, well, first of all, you gotta understand it's a different area I went to. It was a different ward. I did not connect it to at all. Well, Patrolman, it may have been outside your ward, but distance-wise between the area where you were looking and where, where this restaurant was, it's not a long distance, is it? No, sir. It's really not. Okay. Did any other officer come out there that evening? Not that evening. Uh, were you working on the day of May 6th of 1993? Yes, sir. Two detectives came out and they took a report as far as what I'd seen, uh, description of the gentleman, and then they took blood scrapings off the wall. All right, Detective Rich, what is the date that you sent the blood scrapings off to the crime lab to be analyzed? They were never sent. They were never sent? That's correct. All right, where are the, the blood samples at this time? I don't know, sir. They're right. lost. They're lost? Yes, sir. That's my mistake. I lost a piece of evidence. Most of the time, he came up with the stupid ideas. I don't guess I influenced him about as much as he influenced me, I guess. Most of the time we didn't really set out to do anything in particular. We just started hanging around and whatever happened just usually happened. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. We were just sitting on the couch watching TV the night we were arrested. <laughs> the pigs busted in, started running all over the house. We tried to hide in the bedroom when the cops first came, but they wouldn't leave. <laughs> we were in the bedroom, turned the light off. Maybe they'll go away. I know, you're in there, open up. <laughs> we saw the lights go out. <laughs> and Dominique um, turned them back on and turned them back on. No, out. that was my sister. Oh. <laughs> thing about it is is that that the, the, the one night that we know somebody owns is the buyer's knife we know he owns that knife he's got the motive his son who he's upset with his son was the only one mutilated the other two weren't mutilated he's he he's got knowledge about the area he knows when the search is over with he's big enough that he can carry the boys there and throw them in he's a jeweler he's He's precise enough to have to have committed that mutilation. All of the pieces fit together with somebody in a different location killing the boys in a different location because there's no mosquito bites on them. So we know that after the boys were killed and during, they weren't outside. They had to be inside because there's no mosquito bites on them. 
So that means they were carried from a death scene someplace, unconscious, and brought down to the river. And they had to be killed shortly before they brought down there because they all died within a short period of time. So after they were bled to death, after they were bludgeoned and unconscious, somebody had to take those three, take them to the scene, and dump them. In order to do that, you got to be physically strong enough to carry a 50 to 60 year old unconscious kid who's hogtied. Jay Jason couldn't have done it. In his best day, he couldn't carry a little baby, those little skinny arms of his. So when we look at this whole thing, all the pieces that they tried to put together, none of it fits with Jason and just about all of it fits towards a person like Byers. When did you receive that knife? On the, I believe it was on the 8th. I've got Jane, it's hard to make this out, January the 8th, 1994. All right, and who did you receive this knife from? I received it from, uh, uh, and how did I actually receive no, it? Who did you receive the knife from? I received it from uh, uh, Joe and uh, the people with HBO okay. Productions. Okay. Bruce and Bruce Joe, and Joe. Whatever he is. All right. Yes. Upon receiving that knife, what did you do with it? I saw what I thought to be some type of substance on the knife, and actually I did not know what it was. I in turn sent this knife to uh, Genetic Design. When the knife was received by your firm. Did you or your lab run tests on that particular knife? There was a small amount of what appeared to be blood um, that was dried or tissue in uh, a, a crevice on the knife where the knife folds when it locks. The results of the test showed us that um, there was DNA um, present on the knife and that we were able to get a type uh, using a test called HLA-DQ-alpha. And Mr. Byers had the same type that was detected from the specimen from the knife. Okay. And what was the DQ alpha type for Christopher Byers? It was also the same type. So the blood on the knife and Christopher Byers' blood and John Mark Byers' blood all had the same type. Correct. <laughs> Judge, if I can approach the witness. All right. Take a look at that knife. And I will call that, for identification purposes, the John Mark Byers knife. Doctor, did you make a comparison with this knife, E6, and compare that with some of the wounds that you found on Chris Byers? Uh, yes, I did. Right. Does that knife appear to be a serrated knife? Yes, this is a serrated knife. Do you have an opinion if some of the wounds that you found on Chris Byers were consistent with wounds which would have been caused by that type of serrated knife? Well, some of the wounds that have the smaller serrated um, patterns um, could have been um, inflicted with a knife having this type of um, serration. How do you think this has gone over so far on the Mark Byers aspect? Obviously, we thought long and hard about mentioning a father as a possible suspect. I hate having to do that, but the way the circumstances are, it's just coming out whether we really want it to or not. I mean, um, you know, we had suspicions even before the knife showed up. Do you think anybody realizes the reason for the three-day delay in Jesse's trial was waiting on that? the DNA test to come back on that buyer's knife? I doubt it. And even after the results came back and it showed that it could be Mark's blood as well as Chris's blood, that doesn't alleviate the fact that he said no one had ever cut themselves on the knife. And it shouldn't have had blood on it at all. Well, do you think the theory, or the, the argument at least, that it wasn't that the blood was found on the blade, which could be easily wiped off, but it was back in the hinges that you normally wouldn't think, you know, if you were wiping off the blood, you wouldn't think the blood would be inside the hinges, and that's where they found that particular blood. How do we get that in? Well, Just ask Gitchell? 
ask buyers. I mean, we could put buyers up on the stand. I think the jury expects to see him now. Well, they want to see him up there. They want to see what he has to say. Don't you think so? I think so. Yes. Right, Mr. Byers, I need to ask you about a defense exhibit number E6, this particular folding lock blade Kershaw knife. If I could approach the witness, Your Honor. Yes. Take a look at that knife, please. <coughs> Had that knife ever been used before? Used for what? Used for any purpose. I'd had trimmed your toenails with it. I had uh, attempted to trim on some venison that I had. Uh, you attempted to trim on some venison. When was it you attempted to trim on some venison? Some one time around the Thanksgiving holidays. Do you recall being asked on January the 26th, this is on page three, <clears throat> by Inspector Gitchell, had you ever taken that knife hunting or use it recently? You remember being asked that question by Inspector Gitchell? Specifically, no, sir. He asked me a lot of questions. All right. Do you remember giving the answer? No, that knife had not been used at all. It had just been kept up, put in my dresser, and I didn't use it. And the reason why was because of the serrated edges. Do you recall giving that answer to uh, Inspector Gitchell on the 26th? No, sir, I don't recall giving him that exact answer. I'm sure his question wouldn't have been asked exactly like your question was. All right, did Gitchell tell you, let me explain a problem we had, and you need to answer this for me. We have found blood on this knife. Did Gitchell ask you that question? I don't remember if he said there was or not. Did you tell Gitchell you had no idea how Chris's blood could be on that knife? Yes, sir, I would not have any idea. If his blood was on that knife, I would not know how it got there. Did you have any idea how human blood was on that knife? Well, yes, I would have an idea. I cut my thumb. All right. Isn't it true that you never told Inspector Gitchell on January 26th that you ever cut your thumb with that particular knife? Did you? Yes, sir. It seems like during the course of the day, I did tell him that. Okay. Was that during the, the taped conversation or was that after? I don't remember. Okay. On the top of page eight, do you recall being asked the question? I have no idea, no idea how it could have any human blood on it. Do you recall giving that answer? Yes, sir. Then do you recall stating, I don't even remember nicking myself with it, cutting the deer meat or anything? Is yes. that the answer you gave? Yes, sir. And is that the truth? Uh, at the time when he was questioning me, I didn't rem I mean, I might not have remembered. We were getting ready to go into a trial. Uh, Did you remember on this date cutting yourself on, with the, the venison or not cutting yourself? The date that Gary questioned? The date that Gary questioned, yes, sir. I might not have remembered it at that time when he was questioning uh -huh. me, but I could have remembered it later on in the day and talked to him about uh -huh. it. Okay. Earlier that afternoon, had you given Chris a whipping? Approximately around 5.30. And this was about 5.30, and was this with a belt? Yes, sir. Okay. And approximately how many times did you hit him with a belt? I spanked him two or three times. <clears throat> and in what part of the body did you spank him? It would have been just on his behind. Okay. Was his, uh, was he wearing his pants or did you have to pull his pants down? No, he had on blue jeans. Oh, okay. <coughs> the judge back there during that last recess before you were recalled here says that you have a brain tumor and you're being treated. Can you, do you want to talk about that? Is it true? It's been rumored since Corning. Yes, I have a brain tumor. And you were being treated? Yes, I'm being treated for I need to ask you one question, and, and I hope you won't get angry. But has this, this even the suggestion that you may have had something to do with the murder of these boys caused any problems uh, within your, your, your family or with any of the other uh, victims' families? No. They all, they all know the truth, and no. Do you have anything to do with these boys, Dad? No more than you did. 
Fogelman says you're buying a new house. Is that right? You're leaving West Memphis? I didn't say that. Fogelman did this morning. Yeah, he said that's why you were leaving. You know, we might try to move. Out of West Memphis? Well, somewhere. I mean, you would probably want to move. You know? Could you say where you're going to move? You want to say? No. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Sullivan. Would you want to live in a house that your baby died less than three-fourths of a mile from it? I wouldn't, no. No, okay. That answers the question. Come on. You're talking about your whole family, though, right? You're not just talking about you. You wouldn't move and leave your wife and children somewhere, would you? Not if we were going to stay together, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, some of the questions you ask are kind of ridiculous, you know. I know you might ask them, but some of them are kind of odd or strange or different or, you know, however you'd like to comment on them. But some of them, it seems like you just use a little common sense and think about what you would do or how you would feel. Some of the questions you fellas would maybe or have to ask. Well, the only thing is we, we have to ask them. We have to ask them because we can't quote ourselves. We have to... I know, but then a lot of times things are printed in the paper that people did not say in the news media. I'm not stating which individual says they got it from a confidential informer. And you don't have to turn your confidential informer over when your confidential informer is your imagination. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that's printed in the paper that people did not say. But the media has the rights to print what they want to print. You know, victims don't have any rights. Now that I've heard him talk, I don't I kind of had an idea what it was like before he talked, but after he talked, it wasn't anything like I thought he would be. How is he? I see him now as more like a human being than I did before. Now I see him as having a personality. Uh, from a defense standpoint, I've never been a defense attorney, but to put him on the witness stand, sure seemed to be an awful big gamble. And I can't understand the mindset that puts you in the position where you're willing to take that gamble. Especially when you follow it up with Mr. Bojangles accusations. It didn't make any sense. Because to me, if I were on the jury, it would look like just some something desperate. You know, they're going to cast blame on anybody and everybody they can. Of course, the, and the defense didn't have the guts to actually ask him, did he do it? The song that I really can relate to by Metallica is Sanitarium. Because I feel like all those times that I was put in the hospital, I didn't need it. it it was just the police, another way for them setting me up when they couldn't send me to prison or something. They're like, well, we'll get them out of our way for a little while by sending them somewhere else. I like Metallica because, well, all hard music like that because it like gives me an adrenaline rush. It makes me feel more alive.
Now, during the course of uh, talking to Mr. Eccles, did you ask him who did he think did it and why? In one area, he says he had an opinion for who could have done the murders as being someone sick and that it was some type of thrill kill. He also stated that the penis was a symbol of power in his religion known as Wicca. He also stated that the number three has a sacred number in the belief. And do you tell you anything about demonic forces? Yes, sir. He said that all people have a demonic force in them and that a uh, person would have no control over that demonic force. Mr. Eccles was not the only person that told you that the children, the kids probably died of mutilation, was he? No, sir. And when Mr. Eccles, you asked him uh, something to the effect of what type of books did he enjoy reading? Yes, sir. Okay, and, um, and he told you, I think, was it Anton Levy and Stephen King? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in your opinion, is there anything unusual about those being the type of books that Mr. Eccles likes to read? Anton LaVey is a book of satanic rules and involvement. Uh, Stephen King seems to be horror movies, uh, horror books. And if you're asking if I felt that was strange, yes, sir, I did. All right. Now, let me refer you back to your statement that you gave Officer Ridge. Did you tell him in that statement that you had been a member of a white witch group for five years? No. Okay. I've never been a member of any group. And so if he put that in his report, you're saying that's inaccurate? Yes, I am. He made that up? Yes, I am. On question number nine, how do you think it would the person feels that did this? The answer was probably makes them feel good, gives them power. Now, I guess Officer Ridge said that, too. No, I use common sense on that. Okay. If someone was doing it, then they must have wanted to. And if they were doing something they wanted to, it must have made them happy. I don't think they were doing it because someone forced them to or because they didn't want to. Okay. So in your mind, the person that killed these three kids, it's common sense that killing three eight-year-olds would make you feel good. Whoever did it, it must have. Did you also tell him that each person had a demonic side to them? I believe every person has a good side and a bad side, okay. yes. Well, did you, were those your words when you referred, when he's got written down here, he stated that there was no control of the demonic portion of people? He asked me, did I think there were some people that, that, that could not control that side? I said, yes, I guess there is. It also states that Damien stated that the younger the victim would be more innocent and in turn, more power would be given the person doing the killing. Right. Okay. Did you say that? Yes. Okay, those are your words. Mm-hmm. Well, did you pick that up when you were studying to be a Catholic? No. I saw that on several movies, books. Question number 11, when he asked you, how do you think they died? And its answer is mutilation, cut up all three, heard they were in the water drowning, cut up one more than the others, is that, again, what Officer Ridge said and you just agreed? No, I had saw that on TV, newspapers, people talking. And you knew it about the drowning, correct? I knew they were in the water. I didn't know that they drowned. And you knew that one was cut up more than the others? He asked me, was it possible? He said, do you think one was hurt worse than the others? I said, oh. yeah, I guess. So again, that particular area is one of those things where Officer Ridge told you and that wasn't your response. You just responded about the drowning and mutilation. If he didn't get the answer he liked, he would go back and try to get me to say something else. And it's your testimony specifically that you aren't the one who said one was cut up more than the other. No, that it I didn't was know. Officer Ridge who said that. I agreed with him when he said that. Okay. And if he says something different, that'd be he he'd be lying about it, right? You're the one telling the truth. I wouldn't put it past him. Damien, we're getting close to the end now. How do you feel so far? I feel good so far. So far, to me, it looks like we've got it beat. What do you think the worst thing for us right now has been? In the three weeks we've been over here, what has hurt the most? 
I only know of two things that really hurt. That one kid getting up there for Jason. Yeah. And um, those girls. The Thursday newspaper, which addressed you testifying on Wednesday, was real good. It talked about that you did well. But Friday's, regarding your Thursday testimony, wasn't as good. What do you think? I think they did real good the first day. The second day, it didn't look as good because Davis kept trying to trip me up or something. There was one point in there, though, where he asked you, he says, it looks like you're just changing your story to fit whatever comes up. And you said, yeah. I was just like halfway listening to him. After I was, I was real nervous when I first got up there, enough to keep my attention focused and everything. But after I was up there a few minutes, it started daydreaming. Daydream. <laughs> Maybe they'll only halfway kill you when they convict you. Halfway? Yeah. How they do that? I don't know. Maybe they'll start daydreaming and forget what they're doing. <laughs> Anything wrong with wearing black in and of itself? No. Anything wrong with the heavy metal stuff in and of itself? No. The Book of Shadows, anything wrong with that in and of itself? No. But when you look at it together and you get, you begin to see inside Damien Eccles. You see inside that person and you look inside there and there's not a soul in there. My client is a teenager and we certainly didn't hide that fact from you. And the fact that my client did some writings, take these back. Go back and read them. Go read all these. But this, in and of itself, is no evidence of murder. And even if you add in all the other things, quote, trappings of occultism, according to Dr. Griffiths, that has nothing to do with this case whatsoever. Is it a coincidence that this knife is found behind, in the lake, hidden behind Jason Baldwin's house? There are marks on Christopher Byers where you've got like a dash where it's a cut, a cut, an open space, a cut, and an open space. And if you take this knife and do that, you can see it leaves a cut and an open space, cut and an open space. Now, if you take this knife, exhibit, Defense Exhibit 6, and even with the slightest pressure, it makes a straight line. Crime scene. It doesn't fit for a kid to bleed to death and not leave a drop behind. For all the other injuries to their faces, these other injuries are going to bleed too. And there's not a drop of blood? Not a drop of blood? Look at history. Look at hundreds of years of religious history. There have been hundreds of people killed in the name of religion. It is a motivating force. It gives people who want to do evil, want to commit murders, a reason to do what they're doing. Satanic panic. Yeah, that's a scary thing. But it's a scarier thing to convict someone with no evidence. If you can't figure it out, if it doesn't make sense, let's call it a cult killing and find somebody weird. Find somebody who wears black. But they left one thing go by the wayside, is that there's nothing that links Jason to these activities. Not one witness says, that's what he does. That's his beliefs. We don't have a writing, not a drawing, not a picture. Not a person, nothing links him to it. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter to them. Because he's sitting over there with Damien. They want you to convict him. Guilt by association is a horrible thing. Damien, do you think he looks like you? I don't know. Not really. I think he's got Dominique's ears. Can you change his diaper, Sammy? Hopefully not. <laughs> Someone 
So do you think you'll be spending more time with your child, Damien? Come on, Damien, it's time. So what's his first words gonna be? Not guilty? Mm, his first words would be capital murder. <laughs> what's it feel like to be, to go through a month long trial that accuses of something you didn't do? It's horrible. Are you nervous now? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing we can do right now but sit around and wait, but... Um, you, you got anything you want to ask me? Where do we go when um, the jury comes back out and says I'm not guilty? <laughs> well, where do you want to go? Um, where do you want to go? Disneyland, maybe? Would you? Would you like yeah. to go to Disneyland? Have you, have you ever been anywhere out of, have you ever been on a trip at all? Hebrew Springs. Hebrew Springs. Well, I tell you what, my man, I, 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 it'd be a joy to take you. Would you like to go? You would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Do you understand now why we, uh, why we didn't want you to testify? Yeah. Can you see how it hurt Damien? You, you, mm -hmm. I think it did. And he see how they talked about his witnesses. Mm -hmm. See, they didn't have anything to talk about us. They didn't have anything to talk about because we didn't give them a chance. And, uh... oh man, it's heavy. Do you think that um, this will change at all? How you choose your friends? Yeah. What do you think this would do? What do you think this is going to do to you and Damien, you and your friendship with Damien? Stop it, I guess. Yes. Would you stop being his friend? I wouldn't be his enemy, but after this, he probably wouldn't be around or not. You, you heard what the, was said about him. Do you think you could have done it? About what they said. Yeah, do you think he could have? Do you think Damien could have killed those little boys? They made it seem like he did. What do you think? I don't know. If you were on that jury, you'd have, would you have a hard time letting him go? Based on what you heard? Yeah. I would too. Would you let yourself go? Yeah. If I was up there, I'd let myself go definitely. That's the answer I wanted to hear. Because you know you didn't do it, don't you? Yeah. Did Paul surprise you on his closing? I think Paul should have left out the guilt by association part. He came down hard on that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea he was going to do that? Mm -hmm. I thought he'd be smart enough to stay away from him. Hurt your feelings? I wanted to strangle him. <laughs> Were you watching the jury? Mm-hmm. How do you pick it? With my finger? No. Um, <laughs> now I think it was probably about 
44 and 60 against us. If you get out of here, are you going to buy the beer? The whiskey. <laughs> no beer. And I'll buy the Bojangles chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Get a cigar, cut it open, dump all the tobacco out, fill it up with marijuana, smoke the whole thing. I mean, we gotta get you out of here. You gotta go to work where you can pay my bill. <laughs> I'm gonna get a job at a gas station or something. Change my name to Bob Smith. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the bailiffs inform me and, uh, that you've arrived at verdicts. If you if you have, pa pass them to the bailiff, please, or the sheriff. And The first verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, find Damien Eccles guilty of capital murder in the death of Stevie Branch. We, the jury, find Damien Eccles guilty of capital murder in the death of Chris Byers. We, the jury, find Damien Eccles guilty of capital murder in the death of Michael Moore. We, the jury, find Jason Baldwin guilty of capital mur murder in the death of Chris Byers. We, the jury, find Jason Baldwin guilty of capital murder in the death of Stevie Branch. We, the jury, find Jason Baldwin guilty of capital murder in the death of Michael Moore. All of the verdicts are signed by the foreman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's necessary at this time that the court poll the jury as to all six verdicts. So when your name is called, if these six verdicts represent your individual verdict, then answer yes as your name is called. Juror number one. Yes. You are number two. Yes. You are number three. Yes. You are number four. <laughs> you are number five. Yes. You are number five. Yes. You are number seven. Yes. The prosecution didn't have any evidence, but they don't care. Just because somebody wears black and has different beliefs, they're going to convict them of something. Poor, poor parents. Yeah, I'm sorry for them, but I ain't, I ain't sorry for them. I'm sorry for I the kids. For I don't give a damn about the parents, but I'm sorry for the kids. I ain't, I ain't sorry for them. I'm sorry for anybody. There's no reason to kill three more boys that didn't do a damn thing. Right now, I wish I was a witch. Talk about a spell on somebody. Boy, I'd put a good one on. I guess Gitchell goes out with big bangs, and you know he's so, fucking gonna retire. He's already said he's gonna retire. Now he's probably gonna run for office. I got an office for him. Mayor of hell. As far as I'm concerned, West Memphis can go to hell. West Memphis is hell. I have uh, put my 20 years in. And uh, hopefully this is the last case I'll have of this magnitude. Uh, hopefully it's my last case. And uh, I'm leaving on a high note, so there's no better way to leave than your head up high and proud. Well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm not surprised if that, that's what you, you're asking. You know, I told you earlier, I thought the evidence was, was uh, more than sufficient to make those findings. They won't kill no more babies. No more babies will they kill. Let's go. Mm. Sheriff, I lock the door right behind you. Come in, let's get it. Here. The black one is blue or blue? Blue or yellow? Yes.
real small that people were going to know who I was. I always had that feeling. I just never knew how they were going to learn. And I kind of enjoy it because now even after I die, people are going to remember me forever. They're going to talk about me for years. People in West Memphis will tell their kids stories. It, it, it'll be like, sort of like I'm the West Memphis boogeyman. Little kids will be looking under their bed before they go to bed. Damien might be under there. <laughs> 